Hey folks, David Dole here with The Rational National. So, I was watching MSNBC this morning, as I'm one to do. Uh, I watch Morning Joe, don't judge me. But I watch it because it's important to know what mainstream media is talking about. It, they Just because they're, you know, mainstream media doesn't mean that they don't cover topics that need to be discussed. So, I watch Morning Joe because they tend to give a good overview of the topics that are sort of going to make the major news items in mainstream press for the day. So I was watching this morning and I caught Joe Scarborough saying something sort of offhandedly and it, it <laughs> he kind of confirms uh, a long-standing theory that many people who have been analyzing news for for a while have thought and that's Joe Scarborough has a lot of control at MSNBC in terms of what happens on air now this has been echoed by uh, former employees like Jenk Uger who has said the same thing that Joe Scarborough and Phil Griffin uh, MSNBC president are good friends and Joe has a lot of input on what actually happens on air and that was kind of confirmed today in this clip. I will tell you, I had a conversation with Roger Ailes after Gabby Giffords. Yeah. And said to him, we've known each other for a long time. I, you know what, I, I, I don't criticize you guys uh, that much. I never told you how to do your job, but we've crossed the line. And I specifically said, Glenn Beck has crossed the line. And he says, I won't say the word that I said, stuff on television every day that has my mother and other people in my family call, calling me up, believing that the government is literally coming to kill them. I said, this leads to people getting killed. And I will say it too. I then walked down and I talked to Phil Griffin. I said, Phil, you have people on your air that are whipping up, up extremists on the other side of Glenn Beck. And words have consequences. Your television shows have consequences. Enough. And, you know, of course, I had told Phil that every day for six years, so it didn't have as much of an impact on Phil <laughs> no, as you guys maybe had a really on Roger Mills. But, about it, but, actually. but we had a great conversation, and Roger did. And I'm sure it wasn't because of my phone call, but at some point, he and everybody else at Fox understood. So describe that, that compared to now. At the point, Glenn Beck was being irresponsible. Something, by the way, Glenn Beck now says himself. All right, so I gave you the full context there because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't taking Joe Scarborough out of context. So you hear him talking about where he, he makes a good point that Glenn Beck was, I would say, one of the many Fox News anchors who were essentially brainwashing people into thinking that the Obama government was working against them and was going to come take their guns or take their freedoms or whatever the hell Glenn Beck was saying at the time, that even Glenn Beck himself now has come around and said, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of crazy. <laughs> I've said some, some crazy things. So that part I have no issue with. These people can have you know their personal conversations with, with other members of the media who work in other... Uh, or who who run other networks uh, like he, he discussed there with Fox News, with Roger Ailes. So, cool, whatever. But then he goes on and compares Glenn Beck to people on the other side, meaning people on the left that were on, that were on MSNBC that were somehow comparable to Glenn Beck. I... Uh, who are these people that Joe Scarborough was talking about? Now, I have some ideas because just in the terms of just in terms of what MSNBC used to have on their air compared to what they have now, but just taking it objectively, there has never been a person on MSNBC that you can say is as or was as equally as crazy as Glenn Beck was on Fox News. That person just doesn't exist. So to try and compare them is insane. And that shows you the sort of influence that 
Joe Scarborough potentially had or has now over MSNBC, that he was having these conversations and I guess having them over six years, acting like he didn't have much of an effect. I think Joe tried to almost protect himself there at the end by saying, well, I've had these over six years and there's been no effect, but there has. We've seen MSNBC change since Phil Griffin became president in 2008. It began off uh, progressive, and then I would assume now, by what Joe is saying, as Morning Joe became a bigger hit at MSNBC, and Joe became or Joe Scarborough became more involved with uh, production, that he began to have more of an influence over what happened at the network. And so I made a list of na names here of people who used to be on MSNBC, but since Phil Griffin took over and MSNBC and uh, Joe Scarborough began to gain more power at the network, the progressives that have been fired or let go because of it or left because of pressure. And that list includes Dylan Radigan, Cenk Uger, Ed Schultz, Melissa Harris Perry, Martin Bashir, and Crystal Ball. These are are all people who are who were strong progressive voices, people who were clearly on the left and gave that view of look, this is what is happening. This is how, this is the the corporate power, how money affects politics. And yes, I'm also going to criticize Barack Obama and what the Democratic Party is doing. The, this is what these people did. But because Joe Scarborough saw them as equals to Glenn Beck, but on the left, then he was able to go to Phil Griffin and talk about these people and be like, why are you having these people on air? Why are you letting Cenk Uger speak truth to power? Why, <laughs> why are you letting uh, Dylan Radigan talk about the influence of corporate money on our politics? Why are you letting this happen? I mean, obviously I'm making these conversations up right now, but you have to imagine those are the sorts of conversations that Joe Scarborough had with Phil Griffin. So this confirms what we kind of already knew. And it's worth mentioning as well that Rachel Maddow, Chris Hayes, and Lawrence O'Donnell have all become slowly and slowly less and less progressive and have really just fallen in line and taken the, the establishment or the, the status quo view of things. And have stopped criticizing the Democratic Party. Look, after Hillary lost the election, after the, the Democratic Party lost over a thousand seats in eight years, there really hasn't been any critical takedowns from either of these anchors, these so called supposed to be progressive anchors, or at least liberal anchors on the network. There hasn't been any introspection on the Democratic Party. And the, fail and the failures that fall on their shoulders for losing the voters and not being able to gain people or get people out of their homes to vote for them. Instead, people like Rachel Maddow blame the Green Party. Green Party voters. You know, people that would have voted for Hillary? No. If you are a Green Party voter or a Libertarian voter, uh, two sets of voters that Maddow ha has has both criticized for not coming out for Hillary Clinton. If you're one of those voters and there was no Green Party and there was no Libertarian Party, you would have stayed home. Well, what makes Rachel Maddow think that you, as a voter who is voting for a Green Party candidate, which if you're voting Green, clearly you are fairly left and you care about specific policies. What makes her think that you would have voted for Hillary Clinton? instead of just staying home. So this, this voter blaming thing needs to stop. The people that have the power, that's who you should blame because they also have the power to change things. So that's why it's important to point out people like Joe Scarborough and Phil Griffin, people who have power at MSNBC and how the network has changed because of their influences on their anchors. And that's also why it's important to to strike back at people like Hillary Clinton and all of the, the Democratic operatives that have led the party to these losses over and over again because of that way of thinking, because they have lost the voters. The voters haven't lost them. 
They've lost the voters. It's on the people in power, the parties, to get those people. So I went off on a bit of a tangent there, but <laughs> getting back to MSNBC, this just confirms what we sort of already knew. But I guess it's kind of good to hear Joe Scarborough say it, but I don't think he was even realizing what he was saying is, is kind of, you know, the funny part about that. So while he is correct that Glenn Beck was a lunatic who was causing people to think things that weren't true, leftists, progressives who were on the network were actually correct in their assessments. Everyone knows Joe Scarborough himself has even talked about the influence of corporate power and money on politics, though it's barely ever mentioned. He'll mention it like once every three years. But this was a constant theme that a lot of these hosts that have been knocked off discussed. Or let's say Melissa Harris Perry, who discussed racism and, and the importance of race in politics. I'm sure many of those topics Joe Scarborough knew nothing about and had no interest to really discuss them and thought maybe she was pulling the network too far to the left, talking about Black Lives Matter. But again, that's speculation on my part. But just taking from what Joe Scarborough himself said, this just helps us understand why MSNBC has gotten to where it now is.